Sometimes chemical reactions happen between objects, common everyday objects where you least expect it. And this demonstration I'm about to show you is one of those. But it's based on a reaction that's been around for a long time. It's called the thermite reaction. And it's between iron oxide and aluminum. Let me go to the board and show you what that reaction looks like. There actually are lots of different forms of iron oxide. Iron 3 oxide will work for this reaction. And when it's reacted with aluminum, and these both in the solid state, that's kind of unusual. Not many reactions happen between solids. They're mostly between liquids and gases or aqueous, but when these two things react, usually in powdered form to increase the surface area, it's a very vigorous reaction, and all it involves is aluminum saying, hey, I want the oxygen. We get aluminum oxide and iron. And I put a solid after that iron because that's the usual state for iron, but often this thing generates so much energy, so much heat, that the iron comes off, off in molten form. Red hot liquid iron. So powders of, we're talking rust here, iron oxide rust, and aluminum, same stuff you have in your aluminum foil roll there, powders of those two mixed together has a rather high activation energy. If they had a lot of energy to get going, but once it does, it gives off so much energy, it creates the very stable, thermodynamic stable uh, aluminum oxide, and it creates molten iron. Now, I say it's very important historically because the West was developed mostly by railroads going through, and those railroads were built with the rails being tied together, fused together, with this reaction. So, historically, just, you can store these two powders, quite stable, until you supply the activation energy, and then you've got instant molten iron right there on the spot. Now, I've seen that done in the chemistry lab, too, and it sends sparks everywhere, and it's quite impressive. This one, I think, is even more impressive because I'm going to be holding onto it with my hands, and it's going to happen at a very small scale. Here's my source of iron oxide, these rusty steel spheres. And I'm going to take, there's two of them, but I'm going to wrap one of them in the aluminum. And these are heavy. Okay, they're like shop puts. And again, traditionally, the activation energy is supplied with heat. Magnesium ribbon or something like that. But here we're going to be supplying it with pressure. So I'm literally just going to strike these two spheres together. And where they make contact, well, you'll see, okay? So, you see that right there? A little spark. Depends on how hard I hit it, and the orientation really matters too. I'm rotating this to get a nice, fresh spot of rust. It's especially impressive if we can see it in the complete dark. So let's set the lights out and watch the spark patterns that form. Okay, lights back up. You can see I've used up parts of the aluminum here and parts of the iron oxide here. But of course, this will continue to rust and I can always get another piece of aluminum foil. Nice, easy to set up little demonstration. It's got a lot of neat thermochemistry involved in it, the thermite reaction, and one that's so easy to do. Thank you.